Why didn't the Prime Minister sack the former Health Secretary on Friday morning? Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, we had a, I read the story in common with uh, you and uh, everybody else on, on Friday, and we had a new Health Secretary in place by Saturday, uh, Mr Speaker, which I think, given that we, given that we have a pandemic, I think uh, to move from one Health Secretary to the next uh, w- with that uh, speed uh, was, was fast, Mr Speaker, but it wasn't as fast as the vaccine rollout, uh, Mr Speaker. But what a ridiculous answer. The, pri- the Prime Minister must have been the only person in the country who looked at that photo on Friday morning and thought that the Health Secretary shouldn't be sacked immediately. <laughs> on Friday, the Prime Minister's spokesperson said, quote, the Prime Minister considers the matter closed. <laughs> then on Monday, he tried to take the credit for the Health Secretary's resigning. In a minute, he'll be telling us he scored the winner last night. <laughs> but let me press the Prime Minister a bit more on this. The person the Health Secretary was in a relationship with was his non-executive director. Let me remind the House, according to the Government's own guidance, one of the roles of a non-executive director is to challenge the Secretary of State and the Department, to challenge them, and they receive taxpayers' money for doing so. So from the offset, it was blindingly obvious that there was a conflict of interest here and a whole host of unanswered questions. Why on earth did the Prime Minister judge that this matter was closed on Friday morning? Mr Speaker, I I hesitate to to accuse the Right on Regent of repeating his question. I observe that the non-executive director in question is also uh, no longer uh, with the department. And what the, what the continuity, Mr Speaker, is that that department is getting on with the fastest vaccine rollout of any, uh, of, of any European country. And I... So, Mr Speaker, it's no questions asked by the Prime Minister on Friday and no questions answered today. Yeah. There's a pattern here. When Dominic Cummings broke the rules by driving to Barnard Castle, the Prime Minister backed him. When the, when the Housing Secretary unlawfully approved a billion pound property deal for a Tory donor, the Prime Minister backed him. When the Home Secretary broke the ministerial code, the Prime Minister backed her. And when the Health Secretary broke Covid rules, the Prime Minister tried and wanted to back him too. Every time it's the same old story. Isn't it the case, Mr Speaker, that while the British people are doing everything asked of them, it's one rule for them and another rule for everybody else?